Ah oh, yes, the Pax Romana, a town filled with peace, prosperity and stability for the Romans. What else could you desire? Well, hopefully not a civil war caused by the death of a Roman emperor, right? It's the year AD 68, Nero committed suicide after being declared a public enemy by the Senate, which made Galba the new emperor, ending the Julio-Claudian dynasty. But why Galba? To put it simply, he supported Vindex in a revolt led against the reign of Nero in late 67 or early 68 AD. Although Vindex was unsuccessful since he would lose to Lucius Virginius Rufus in the Battle of Byzantium. The revolt did succeed with Galba gaining much support. One noticeable supporter for Galba was Otho, legate of Lusitania, who will play a vital part later. Galba would therefore be proclaimed with the purple at age 70. Galba was appointed the role of Caesar on 8th June 68, while still in Spain, during his journey to Rome. He would get rid of his political and dangerous rivals, Many men were murdered, including Obutronius Sabinus, the probable governor of Baetica. In Gaul, he executed Betus Silo, who fought Vindex while Lucius Virginius Rufus was relieved from his post in the Germania Superior. He would finally reach the holy city in October. His welcome was greeted by many citizens, and the legion Audiotrix, consisting of mostly sailors, they wished to speak to Galba, however, he did not wish to speak to them after some squabble and a handful of drawn swords. Galba ordered his cavalry to attack the mostly unarmed men at the Melvian Bridge. With blood on his hands, he would enter the holy city being seen as an ill omen. Although he would listen to the request, his despotism would not hide as he would submit them to a decimation. Galba would appoint ineffectual men to important provinces, including Hordionius Flaccus, who was by then old and disabled, to Germania Superior, or the gluttonous Arlus Vitellius was sent to Germania Inferior. In Rome, he showed contempt to those who had served under Nero, while only trusting three men who had been with him in Spain, Titus Vinius, Cornelius Laso, and Isilus who would amass a great sum of wealth in seven months, similar to what Nero's freedmen had accumulated in over 13 years. His strict disciplinary in character would trigger resentment against him. He even turned against one of his first supporters, Aulus Caesinia Elienus, former quaestor of Baetica, who had sent the money in his possession when Galba rebelled. His wrongdoings would finally bite him back once the legions of Upper and Lower Germania threw down Galba's image and declared Aulus Vitellius, the new emperor, on 1st January 69 AD. Nice. This insubordination, but the Rhine Legion faced him with a threat of succession, as he had lost both his sons before becoming emperor. He adopted a junior senator, Lucius Calprinius Piso Lucianus, as his successor. However, this would be a fatal error for Galba, as although the young man was from a distinguished family, he had little political power, as he had spent much of his time in exile during Nero's reign, which made his resentful rival, Marcus Salvius Otho, strike back, as he felt that he was worthy of being the successor to Galba. Otho was one of the first supporters of Galba, and imagined naturally that he would be named successor to the Purple. Yet this outrageous decision made him take the matter to his hands. He bribed the Praetorian guard, who was already miserable with Galba's reign, since he declined to pay them money, which was promised by Nymphidius. On 15th January 69, while Galba was sacrificed in the temple of Apollo, Otho slipped away, got on his litter, and got carried to the Praetorian camp, where he was proclaimed emperor. The news reached Galba in his imperial palace. Now, he was faced with a predicament. Either barricade the palace, preparing for a siege, or face off He chose the latter, and while being carried in a litter to the forum, 
Ofo's cavalry would stop the litter, and he would be stabbed in the neck by Camorius, a soldier of the 15th Legion. His and Piso's head would be put on spikes and carried around the city. Galba's steward, Argivus, would rescue the body and head of the late emperor and bury it in the emperor's own garden. Otho was thrilled to be the emperor he envisioned himself to be. He was recognised by the senate as emperor on the same day as the death of Galba. He himself was much less of a cruel tyrant than his predecessor, and so was expected to be a fair emperor. However, he would face a complicated situation, as Aulus Vitellius was marching to Rome with allegiance from the Rhine legions. Vitellius was initially going after Galba, but since the power had shifted to Otho, it was up to him to stop the revolt. Otho wished to stop the civil war with a more pacifist approach by offering to share power with Vitellius and even proposing marriage to Vitellius's daughter. Yet his offers were declined. Now, his key priority was to slow down the Vitellian advance so that the Danubian legions would arrive to his aid. Otho would leave Rome at around 14th March and establish the main camp at Bedrachium, north of the river Po, some 20 miles east of Cremonia. Meanwhile, Vitellius had sent his army under the command of Fabius Valens and Aulus Caecina Alienus. Caecina arrived first and set up his position outside Cremona. Once Valens arrived with the other division, the Vitellian army was almost twice the size of the Ophonian army. Since the Danubian legion still had not arrived, Vitellian's troops would pressure them by beginning work on the bridge so that they can cross the river Po and advance to Rome. Otho would have no choice but to force his troops to advance on the enemy, and in what would be the first battle of Bedrachium, Otho would suffer defeat. The news would reach Otho at Bruxellum, although he could have chosen to drag out the civil war and put the lives of more Romans in danger. He advised his family and friends to flee for safety, or he retired to his room and stabbed himself to death on 16th April 69. This heroic end for Otho would impress his soldiers, who too were greatly impressed by his final act of courage. Aulus Vitellius was the man at the right place at the right time. When he was appointed to Lower Germanian in December 68, he soon became part of a web of intrigue aimed at overthrowing the emperor. If you remember, Galba appointed ineffectual men in Germania to reduce the risk of rebellion by the dissatisfied Rhine legions, and since Vitellius himself had no military accomplishments, he was the perfect pick. However, as we know, Galba had badly misjudged the ambitious Vitellius. The rebellion began on 1st January 69, with the upper Germania legions refusing to swear loyalty to Galba. Two days later, the lower Germanic troops also joined the rebellion and appointed Vitellian as the emperor. Gaul, Britain and Raetia also joined the rebellion and once Vitellius settled to march into Rome, he was not faced no more with Galba but with Otho. Since Vitellius was no soldier, his generals Valens and Caecina overthrew Otho and took Rome. The transition to the new regime was generally peaceful with a few executions and arrests. He even forgave Otho's brother, Salvius Titianus. He would rest easy after being reinforced from a report that the Eastern army swore allegiance to him. To reward the legionaries, Vitellius disbanded the current urban cohort and Praetorians and replaced them with his own troops. It was ultimately an undisciplined mess, but he had submitted to the demands since his stroke of luck was derived from the Germanic troops. Vitellius's reign was short-lived, as around in the middle of July, news reached Rome that the eastern provinces had set up support for the distinguished Titus Flavius Vespasianus. He was to hold Egypt, while Mucianus, governor of Syria, led an invasion of Italy. A force of five legions would battle the twice-bigger Vitellian force 
at the Second Battle of Cremona on 24th October. The battle would last for a day and would result in a complete victory for the Flavians. This catastrophic loss for Battalion forced him to flee Cremona and sent his troops to hold the Apennine Passes against the Flavian advance. This effort was futile since the legion would join the Flavians at Narnia on 17th December. Three days later, the Flavian army arrived in Rome. It was the end of Vitellian. In a desperate manner, he tried to disguise himself as a poor man in dirty clothing. However, the Flavian troops soon dragged Vitellian out into the Forum, where he was tortured, killed, and his body thrown into the Tiber River. With the death of the third emperor this year comes the end of the civil war. It comes a magnificent rise of the Flavians.